Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna take this raw file and I'm gonna turn it into a very dramatic, very colorful and very vibrant sunset just like this while of course explaining you every single step I do from start to finish. I'm gonna go relatively quick here so I'm gonna straight away bring down the highlights so we have a lot of detail in the sky and I'm also gonna bring up the shadows although not really by a hundred here uh, because otherwise it will be just way too bright but just around 40 looks pretty well. Then the whites I'm actually gonna wait with them and the blacks you know I don't really want to make this too contrasty so I think I'm just gonna leave the blacks at zero and instead go to the contrast and just add a little bit of pop and a little bit of punch there. Then I'm gonna grab a graduated filter because the sky even though we brought down the highlights by a hundred is still a little bit too bright as it is. So let me just grab one over the sky right here and bring down the exposure. Now we can always play around with all of these other settings for the sky and of course for different local adjustments a little bit later but right now I just really want to fix the exposure and I think that looks pretty good. Then let's go on back to the whites and now I can bring them up while holding down the old key and I just want to bring that to the right before and stop before anything clips so that way we get an, a lot of dynamic and a lot of interest in the lighting without actually clipping anything. Then clarity, instead of going into the plus clarity for the overall picture, I think I might even go a little bit into the minus, just because I don't really like the effect, uh, especially on the foreground of making everything so pronounced, all of these sharp textures. I think going a little bit softer works really well for this uh, sunset kind of picture. Then um, color temperature is what I'm gonna adjust next, and uh, I have a little trick for color temperature in my sunset pictures and I always try to go in between the blues and the oranges. So uh, if I reset that here you see we have some blues as well as some oranges in the picture and it's a little bit more towards a bluish side so I just want to warm that up but at the same time I don't want to make it look like this because then we lose all of the blues and you can always add color in the split toning later but for the color temperature if you edit sunset or sunrise pictures I would really suggest you to find a nice in between those blues and those orange and warm tones. So from before to after it's quite a bit of a difference but and it definitely makes the whole scene a lot warmer but we still preserve a lot of these very nice blues. And I really enjoy bringing the tint to the right so I get some magenta and I think it really works very well for sunset pictures. Then lastly we would have vibrance and saturation. I'm just gonna adjust the vibrance here because it tends to add color a bit more subtle than the saturation. So I'm just gonna add a bit here, really don't want to go too far otherwise you know it doesn't look natural anymore but the run plus 25 works pretty well. So let's just quickly see this is where we came from and to the right is after. Uh, it's already quite a bit of a difference but we're nowhere near done yet of course. So let me go down to the tonal curve and here I really like to bring up the highlights and the highlights down here really have a very different effect than the highlights up in the basics adjustments. It really just affects the very bright parts and it really adds a lot of dynamic that way. Of course as always you don't want to overdo it with any of these adjustments. And with the other sliders, you know, just see what looks best. So I'm not really gonna pay too much attention uh, in explaining any of this because there's not really anything to explain. Point curve, I don't really like it too much with landscapes, with cityscapes, it works sometimes, but for especially soft landscape pictures, I don't really like it. Then HSL, you know, you could find tune your color here, but I'm just gonna leave that out because it really doesn't have a very big impact and I just wanna keep the video relatively short. And split toning is a very, very important tool, especially in sunset and of course sunrise pictures. So first thing you have here is highlights and you just wanna click on this little uh, box right here and go through all of the, these colors and at the end, just stick with whatever you like best. And generally I really like to add some purples 
or some warm tones. You know, you could go with blues as well, I've done that before, and that way you can get a very unique and artistic kind of look, but uh, I think I'm just gonna stick with either purple or orange here. Let me just see what works best. I think, you know, orange almost looks a bit too boring. Yeah, I think I like the orange in some portions, but for the overall kind of sky and bright portions, I really like the purple. And I think I'm gonna add quite a bit here. Of course, you'd never wanna add too much, otherwise you're gonna ruin your picture. But around 15 to 20 saturation tends to work really well in my experience. Then shadows is another, you know, pretty much does the exact same thing except for the shadow portions of your photo. And this doesn't really have that big of an impact because of course, naturally, uh, the light is coming from the sky, but you can still play around with this. And in this particular case, I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth here in the shadows, even though that is not really that much. But here is before split toning and here's after. It definitely complexifies the color and I really like the look. Keep in mind that this color is not final yet. I'm still gonna add some local adjustments uh, with some very separate colors to really complexify everything even more. Then detail doesn't matter for the overall look, of course, if you're editing this for yourself, uh, you definitely want to take advantage of it because you really can get a lot of sharpness and detail out of it. But I'm just gonna leave that out because this really is about the overall look and the techniques about how to get lighting and color. Lens corrections, just click on remove chromatic aberration here and you can go to profile, enable profile correction and just choose your lens and that will get rid of the distortion. So really great thing to have. Then effects, you could add some additional vignetting here to get even more attention towards the center. You want to kind of look out for that though if you edit a sunset picture because uh, oftentimes you can get a little bit too much vignetting in the bright uh, sky portions. But you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just look for yourself. And I think I'm just gonna add a little bit here. And lastly, we would have camera calibration here and in terms of profile, just go through all of these profiles and just see whatever you like best. I know not really a great thing to say because I don't give you any strict guidelines, but there's really, you know, it's very different for every single picture. So you just wanna see for yourself what looks best, but it really has a very big impact on these colorful sunset pictures. And as you can see, some of these modes really change the color very significantly. So let me see from a dope standard. I mean, I definitely like this camera landscape and I think I'm actually gonna stick there because I haven't really found any other profiles that really work here, but I definitely have to go up to the basics adjustments and once again, bring down the vibrance, even though I've added it previously. A lot of things, a lot of looks that you go for in Lightroom will really look a lot better if you combined uh, multiple tools, multiple modules in Lightroom and and then, you know, adjust one another uh, respectively. Uh, I hope I made sense there, but yeah, definitely don't be worried to go back up and change something that you've added previously. And if I go here into the history and show you before any camera profile changes, which would be right here. This is before the profile change as well as before the uh, vibrance reduction. And here is after all of that, it adds a little bit too much uh, exposure in the sky, which I'm gonna fix in a second. But overall, I really think it added a lot more different colors and I definitely like the look a lot better. So then let me go back up and I think I'm done with the global adjustments. So now I'm gonna add some local adjustments but before I'm gonna do any of that, hmm, let me just try because there is a bit, a, you know, a lot of sky, which I don't really mind because it's very pretty, but the foreground gets almost not enough intention. So I'm just gonna see how it looks in kind of this panoramic format. And hmm, I think it actually works. Maybe I'm just gonna refine this crop a bit better, maybe take away some of that foreground right here. And yeah, I think I like this a lot better than the original crop. 
so I'm just gonna stick there, but it's, you know, it can be worth to at least play around with some different crops and see if you like it better. But then, um, in terms of local adjustments, I'm gonna back, go back to the graduated filter that I have added at the very start. And I'm gonna go even further down into highlights, as well as down into overall exposure. And you see, after all of these adjustments that we've made, it really required a bit more of minus exposure. And that way you really bring out all of these colors and all of these textures way way better. So let me also play around with these other sliders and I really like to add some contrast because of course that uh, pronounces everything even more and really especially color but I also like to play around with the clarity and clarity you can go both ways here but I think I might even go a bit into the minus because I really like this very soft kind of look. So then um, let's close this one and and add another graduated filter and just drag one over the very top with a relatively soft edge and the reason I'm doing this is so I can go into color and add some additional blue tones and the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to complexify all of this color and I really want to have a bunch of different hues and a bunch of you know different color tones so by just adding one filter on the top left and making you know adding some darker blues I think it really complexifies everything pretty good Another thing that you can do is just grab a graduated filter over the portion of the sky where the light is coming from and then adding a bit uh, plus exposure and add another one in parallel and go into the minus exposure and that way you really complexify the lighting even more and you know sometimes it doesn't work all that well but I really like it for the maturity of my pictures. So then I think we're nearing the end. Another thing that you could use the graduated filter for is to close out the picture from the top and both the bottom by just making these portions a bit darker and you know it works also at quite a lot of the times just a little bit I think even works in this particular photo. So then, I think it is time for Dodge and Burning, and Dodge and Burning is making individual parts of your picture darker and brighter, and that way you really can create a lot of interest, a lot of differentiation, and complexify your whole light. So as you see, pretty much the entire foreground, you know, I like the kind of darkish exposure because I think it works really well for the mood, but it's a bit dull, it's a little bit flat. So I'm just gonna grab one filter over here. Always wanna make sure that your feather is to 100 and go into the plus exposure. And especially in sunsets, you can really mix that with some warm or some purple color to really complexify and make everything even more interesting. So I'm gonna go even further into plus exposure here and gonna really grab a relatively big filter and make it seem as if some of that light would have spilled on the foreground. Then just right click duplicate and maybe make a little bit of a smaller one over here with this tractor. Another one on this row to make it relatively small and maybe not go quite as far into the plus exposure. Right click duplicate. You can also so overlap these and you know you could really can create a lot of additional interest so let me just finish that up and I'm gonna go relatively quick here right click duplicate maybe just another one over here you really just want to go with the lighting scheme add some additional interest and you know there's not really too much to say about it if you want to learn more about Dodge and Burning though, then be sure to check out the link in the description. I have made a separate about 30 minute tutorial just about Dodge and Burning. So I'm actually going to speed that up the whole footage with adding plus and negative exposure to Dodge and Burning. And I'll see you in a second.
Alright, so I'm done after adding both plus and negative exposure dodge and burning. Here is before and here is after. So you see the scene looks a lot more interesting in terms of the lighting, a lot more complex. And it might seem a bit spotty at first if you see the direct comparison, but if you haven't overdone it, then it's gonna look still natural and organic at the end while improving your interest and your complexification of the light significantly. So once again, before and after. And I think the last thing that I'm gonna do here and I'd really like to do in sunset pictures is just to grab some additional radial filters and drag them over some parts of the sky and just add some additional color to once again complexify everything and add some additional interest. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink here, right click duplicate, maybe towards the right there's a bit of a darker orange needed. So I can also try to add some contrast, maybe even go farther down in the exposure and also play around with the color temperature of course and add another one right here kind of make this a bit more bluish actually to really get some nice differentiation and you know there's so many different possibilities you can do especially if you already have a very colorful sky so then once I really think that I'm done with a picture I always take a few seconds and just look at everything once again and hmm maybe this part of the dodge and burning could use a bit more just to make it look a bit less pointy and make it look more organic just like this right click duplicate and also do the same thing right here. Yeah, I think that worked even better and maybe even bring down the um, amount of uh, plus exposure that I've added here. So yeah, I think that works pretty well. So let's go here into the history and see where we started at with the raw file. And I mean, you know, huge difference. Everything looks flat. There's really no color differentiation, nor is there any texture in the sky. And if you go here to the edited picture after all of the adjustments, huge difference looks a lot more interesting, a lot more complex, and especially the color is a very, very big difference. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you did so then please be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one if you haven't done so already and of course be sure to share it with your friends if you think they could find it helpful as well anyways i am going to sign out here i hope you have a great day take some great pictures go out on the next sunset and of course as always take care